your host, Cameron Gilmore. This episode coming out is going to be a banger, an absolute banger. Let me ask you this question. What if your relationship with food was one that was a mutual agreement? Meaning that you would mutually agree that the food that you eat would actually be good. And when you eat the food, you wouldn't beat the heck out of yourself, right? We do this all the time, right? We eat crappy food, we eat good food, we eat things that are bad. We watch all these influencers on Instagram and social media that are like, eat this, don't eat that, or eat this. And oh, if you eat this, this is how you're going to feel. It goes nuts. What if you had the ability to have a relationship of food where it was this mutual agreement where I'm going to eat and I'm not going to feel like crap in the sense of I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm not getting this mindset, this freak out mode of how I eat, what I eat, but I start to feel good about what I'm eating. That is the purpose of this entire episode that I did with Joy Milner. See, she has understood and understand and studied food and the relationship we have with food. She also understands the relationship people have with fitness. People think, oh man, guess what? This year, I'm just going to kill it, right? Every January, we have the greatest New Year's resolution. I'm going to get to the gym. I'm going to work out. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to feel this. I'm going to feel that. And by March, man, it's all blown to heck. It's all blown up. And then we spend the next eight months of our of the entire year beating ourselves up because we didn't eat right. We didn't work out. We didn't hit goals. We didn't set goals. I get it. Been there, done that, 100%. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to stop beating ourselves up because there, it does nobody any good. Does you no good? Your mindset, the your, your feeling of self-worth is completely thrown out the window. So first off, stop beating yourself up. Stop. We all have struggles. We all have things we got to get through. Joy Milner is going to take us and walk us through this process of how she was able to now build a passion and a purpose behind educating people and helping them understand how we have a good relationship with ourself and food and fitness and fun and just enjoy life. Then she goes one step further and she goes to areas that just for lack of resources or education or belief, she gets to go in and help educate families on how to be better through fitness and food. Now, we're not going to just shove this all down your throat, no pun intended. We're also going to dive deep into how Joy arrived to where she is today, the trials, the things that she had to go through to get to the where we see who she is today. I am super excited and jacked out of my mind for this episode that's coming out. You're also going to learn something about uh, sugar and how well and how uh, manufacturers and companies hide sugar in everything. You want to know the most addictive drug out there? Listen to this episode, like it, subscribe it, share it, guys. I thank you so much for being a part of the project. Thank you so much for being um, dedicated listeners and sharing this. I mean, eight countries could not have done that without you. Without further ado, here is this this week's and next week's episode of on the Art Study of You on the Art Study of You with Joy Milner. I have been doing it wrong my entire life. Thank you for that, uh, Joy, for just the kick in the butt, the punch in the face, but a big hug afterwards and letting us know everything's going to be okay. Joy Miller joins us today. Let me give you a bit of history about why I wanted her on and what she brings. So she's the founder and well. Um, She's the founder of wellness and director of love. I'm going to kill this founder and wellness director of living joyfully fitness and nutrition coach and a holistic wellness coach. She is going to just bring some absolute heat for us today. Joy, please take about five, five, seven minutes. To tell us a little about who you are and where you grew up, your passions, but more importantly, what gets you out of bed? What springboards you out of bed in the morning without having an alarm clock? I love it. Well, thank you, Cameron. I'm so happy to be here. Let's see. Wow. I um, I was a normal person going to college, getting a business degree and started working full time and felt stuck. My life changed. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me mentally, physically. I just wasn't the same. And I realized that sitting at a desk and working and focusing on something made me really stressed. And I started exercising. I couldn't figure out what my outlets were. 
Um, I, I exercised about 35 years ago and I started teaching, substitute teaching, and I realized the power of wellness and how it affected my life. And so I started teaching wellness to people. I've done it for many, many years. But then really, I guess about 15 years ago, after I was married, had three children, my kids were growing up. I was like, what am I going to do with all this? I mean, there's got to be more to just feeling good and teaching wellness. And I decided to take all of my passions and my blessings and go out and make people feel better through wellness. And that's what I did. I knocked on a door in a low-income neighborhood in St. Louis one day. And I said, can I teach a class for some moms? And they said, yes. And I called myself Living Joyfully. I started realizing the power of connection and how I can help people and where my gifts were. And then I started the Fit and Food Connection, which is a nonprofit. And we go into low-income neighborhoods. We'll talk about that. We do all kinds of things. So basically my passion is connecting the dots for people, providing bridges for them through wellness, letting them understand the power of how to feel better in many holistic ways, and then watch how it brings them confidence and how the confidence transforms into other areas of their life. I was given the name Joy, so I decided at a very early age that I couldn't be crappy. And so I think <laughs> it really helped me uh, with my attitude. And so when I wake up in the morning, I just, I really do spring out of bed. I'm so excited about having a day where I feel blessed and I feel appreciated. And I have the ability to go out and make other people smile and treat them the way that I want to be treated. And I think it is just this desire to bring the world together with peace and with love that just continues to motivate me all day, every day. Oh my gosh. Woo, I told you, buckle up, get your pad and paper. Those of you still do use the antiquated forms of taking notes or replay this multiple times. I, I want to ask you a question because I, I'm often, when I hear wellness, right? Yeah. I have a very, um, small brain when it comes to wellness. What do you mean by wellness? Because I think of diet, nutrition, starving myself, fasting, but that's not, if you go to her website and read it, that's not really what you're talking about. So could you give me a little bit more on what you mean by wellness, help an uneducated mind become a little bit more educated in the wellness space? Absolutely. So people think wellness, I'm going to eat better, or I'm going to exercise. But to me, holistic wellness is how you sleep, how you feel in your mind, like your stress levels, um, what you eat, and how you move. I mean, all these things come together. So that is wellness to me. It's self-care. It's self-love. It's how you're taking care of yourself. So for example, if you were just to eat better, but not sleep well, or if you have stress or you're not moving, you are not healthy. Your body is producing the same things as though you were eating cheeseburgers all the time, which is okay. Um, <laughs> so it's really all of these things together. And that's hopefully one of the many things that can come out of today. It's all these little things that we can do that add up to the most incredible, big, wonderful changes. So all of these little parts of wellness, mentally, physically, really combine to make up one holistic approach that really do work together. Did you catch that guys? Wellness is the all compassing of a human being to making them better top from the tops of your heads to the tippy tops of your toes. And I love that. What's then, the, how does this holistic approach, uh, right. um, how is that combat what you see? Like, Hey, take this pill right? This pill will help here. And it may be, I, again, I'm coming at it from a very, very novice, uh, very, I'm blind to this whole space, right? So I'm going to ask questions where our, our, my audience are probably asking the same queen, same things, but there are probably people will ask more in depth questions later. But so help me that transition from a whole, a holistic approach. And how are you seeing that push through mainstream uh, approach? And I love these questions. And there's never a question that you can't ask me. I feel like if we were all more educated, then change can begin. So, you know, I tell somebody it's like walking into a Sephora store and trying to buy mascara. You know, there's so many things out there. People are reading and seeing and doing. It's so confusing. And so my approach is almost the same as what's happening in society. So companies, they just want to make money and they want to sell you products, right? So they're going to 
provide a box of cereal that says no high fructose corn syrup on the label and it's going to have sugar in five different forms. So we can't really trust people out there because they're putting so many things into what we're eating, for example, that our bodies just cannot stand. That's why the cancer rates are so high. That's why so many people are sick. So when I say holistic, I really just mean simple. You know, it's it's trying to eat from the earth on occasion. It's taking a couple minutes in the day to really deep breathe, send breath through your cells, get your mind right. Maybe it's listening to a favorite song or looking at a photo, you know, move for a couple of minutes. So from a very simple holistic approach is how can we do things that make us feel better? I believe that people feel like we have to run marathons and, you know, the world is just set up to keep excelling and advancing and do all these crazy things. And if we just spent a little bit of time with this simplistic ways to feel better, you wouldn't believe the difference and the results from the inside out. They're amazing. And that's why the work I do is so powerful because you can see it. I get started, I okay. need to give a shout out to my biggest sponsor, Warrior Energy Drink. The reason why we partnered together is because we have the same mindset. We have the same drive. We're, we're for the people. We're about the people. Look, Warrior Energy Drink has zero sugar options and they got water as well. Low calories, great taste, very affordable, no crash, big energy fast high in B vitamins, awesome, awesome design, culture design, 160 milligrams of caffeine. Other energy drinks have way, way too much, and they're always giving it back to their community. They're paying it forward. Partner with them. Guys, click the link below. Go, go get yourself your own Warrior Energy Drink and go crush today. Okay, so I'm, I, need, I, I want you to dive. I need more. Look, I'm, I'm from the reservation. Not a knock on the res. We live, we were, we, we kind of move at a slower pace in life, right? Things are just, you know, slow. However, there's one concept that I absolutely love is getting up early and welcoming the sun, watching the sunrise, right? There's, there's power behind the sunrise. And I don't care if you are saying to yourself, I'm not a morning person, get your butt up, get into a morning person. Can you explain joy in, in all the years, guys, we're talking 30 years of, mm -hmm. of in this industry, I'm pretty sure we can classify her as a, a, a professional in this, a, a speaker of truth. What does getting up early, what does that do for the body? Not only the body, but for the clarity of thought, can you give us mm -hmm. some enlightenment on what that does? Yes. So everybody's body clock is different. And that is a very real thing. I mean, there are people that I'm a morning person, but there are people that literally they just can't turn on until the day progresses. And at night, that's when their brain is really alive. So telling everybody to get up and watch the sunset, I think it's a beautiful idea. And it absolutely is not so much about watching the sunset, about touching down and taking in a moment with no distraction. And that is what's really lacking in all of our lives. But it's also just spending a few minutes making a plan to clear your brain before your day starts. And so watching the sunset or sunrise is a magical thing. That would be a great way to do it. And that makes me feel fabulous. But I think it's also just the principle of when you wake up in the morning, don't start with the technology, jump into your day. Like if you could spend five minutes, 10 minutes, clearing your brain, thinking about your day, doing something that is peaceful and meditative that makes you feel better and really ground you, that really sets you up for a great day. Just building some time into your morning to do something peaceful and watching a sunrise would be a beautiful way or a sunset, you know, at the end of the day to do that. But it is the principle of slowing down and separating yourself and just being in tune with your own self, which we're all lacking. Oh, <laughs> Look, I, 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 that was a, 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 I just lobbed that one up so she could hit it out of the park. Did you guys, if you missed it, rewind it. She said, it's not so much getting up, but it's setting aside time for yourself during the day. We've, we've all, anybody who's followed anybody uh, that's a, a, a mindset coach or a person to them, all the books that are out there, all these books that are behind me, they always talk about before you start your day, do not pick up any electronics but be grateful, almost like this day of gratitude. You're almost starting a day out of gratitude, attitude of gratitude. So give me one or two principles for someone who says, I'm a morning person like you, myself, we can bounce up, well, let's go. Give us one or two principles for them that we can, if we struggle or like a little tweak that you can find. And then also the same as someone who 
it works more effectively as the day goes and then you know more nighttime they're alive give them one or two principles for them to say hey look if you try this because you have clients all over the all over the US and probably all over globally that we can apply just these two holistic again simple principles that help us yeah. become more effective so I think maybe we'll get into like wellness principles a little later, but for this concept of like how to make your days, I think more effective and more calm, one is definitely to get organized. Like I always have a system where the week before, but especially the day before, I'm understanding my day. I'm prepared for my day. Like my food is made. My things are laid out. I'm not waking up in the morning and jumping out of bed and being crazy and stressing already that early in the morning. So I think preparing yourself is really important. The other thing that's really helpful is to have a goal, even if it is a small goal. I like my goals to be surrounded by wellness, right? Maybe I eat an extra serving of vegetables tomorrow, or maybe I'll drink an extra glass of water, or maybe I'm going to get up and literally just move in place for two minutes. But to wake up in the morning, or even if it's five o'clock and you're a night person, you pull from your goal, you have your systems in place. So outside of the wellness goals, it's really being able to be organized, set a goal and build in some self-care at some point throughout your day. I feel like we're getting so many emails. There's so many, ga technology is just coming at us on so many levels and people, nobody has downtime anymore because there's always things that we're doing to fill our time. That's what's really hurting our health more than anything. So it's giving yourself power, empowering yourself to say, no, this is gonna be my five or 10 minutes today to practice my goal, to feel peace, to understand that I got organized so I'm not feeling rushed and crazy. And to spend those couple minutes doing something that sets you up for success and makes you feel good. Whatever time of day it is, it's extremely grounding and it really affects our health in beautiful ways. <laughs> Look, guys, <clears throat> I know you're probably listening to, you know, Spotify or Apple. What I need you to do is go back, go to YouTube and, and, and listen to that part in this conversation. You will see and watch jo Joy get into that zone of genius. You will see her energy just, it just comes out of her. And you will see her speak with such authoritative figure and because she is speaking from years of experience. She's saying, keep it simple. Life doesn't have to be so mundane or so structured, but keep it super simple. And you'll find that you have the greatest joys in your life. Go back and watch it on that part in YouTube. There'll be more parts I can tell you right now, but I love watching people get into that zone, getting to that genius space, and then just feeling that energy. Even if you go back and just feel the energy, it's well worth that 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 point that she just made. Thank you, Cameron. Man. And it's all about us creating this, right? If we wait for life to create these things that we're talking about, it's never going to happen. So it's giving ourselves permission to make these things happen that will ultimately make us feel better. Yeah, love it. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask this because I know you do a lot of good work in these, you know, inner cities, these impoverished cities, these impoverished areas to going in. What in your professional opinion would you say the it in the years you've done, you know, food and nutrition and personal care, would you say is one if uh, if if you could pinpoint one or if there's multiple probably would you say is the greatest disservice for these in, these types of individuals? So people in our lower income neighborhoods in many cities, I mean, they are given a title of the area they live in. They're called food and fitness deserts. And we all know this. I mean, there's no access to farming or crops or healthy foods. I mean, often you'll see like no access to gyms really of any kind, or you'll see a 7-Eleven or a Quick Mart, right? That has food that our bodies don't like all the time. And let me clarify, I believe in living every day like it's your last. I am never telling anybody to do things that don't make you feel good. But what I am telling you is that we can come together and make all these small changes and watch how much better we feel. So for me, I feel like there are so many people in our low-income neighborhoods that feel beaten down by the system, right? They're taken advantage of often by the medical system. They don't have access to things that we do. They don't have the financial security that people around them have sometimes. And so for me, 
I look at it as though I provide a bridge for them. It's almost like a mental bridge. I give them access to things that make them feel better. So whether it's self-care or self-love or wellness or fitness or nutrition, the biggest thing that comes from what I do is confidence. I build confidence in people that feel beaten down by our systems or don't have access to wellness offerings. And then I connect the bridges for them and I watch how the confidence builds into every area of their life. Wow, I can move for a couple minutes. I can set a goal. I can do things that make me feel better. Well, I can do this at work and I can do this with my family. And I just believe that we should all treat people the way that we want to be treated. And to, to just create bridges for people, whether it's in our underserved communities or anywhere, so that we can all work together to feel better. That is really why I work in those neighborhoods. <laughs> the giving back principle is, is, is so amazing. When you have, I'll, I've preached this for years, right? You know, acquired knowledge is great, but unshared knowledge is useless knowledge. Unshared and, anything, right? right. <clears throat> unshared anything. Mindset, just the, the love and the passion we have for people. Yeah. But I didn't know what you, what were, go back to the point you remain, the label that is given to these inner cities or the impoverished version. That is very, that is very, insightful because i didn't know there was a name of course i i wouldn't know if i wasn't doing what is the name in that label and how does that label that is placed upon people go through this generation of mindset of you know this is the way it is this yeah. is how life is and and how do you fight and combat that so are you referring to like the food and fitness deserts yes so these are actually there you can read about them they're very well known i mean they're if you look at let's say things, whether it's gyms or resources for food or any offerings to feel better, yoga, you know, massages, whatever, you get to these geographic areas and there are nothing available. There's nothing available to make people feel better. And so they don't know better. A lot of people that have a 7-Eleven within a five mile radius, let's say, and nothing else, they don't understand that they don't feel good, but it gets to a point where they're, they'll be like, I have no energy or something's not right. Or wow, I looked at that yoga class down the street when I drove by and it looked really cool. And so I like to educate people and I like to provide them with the knowledge and the resources of you can have access to all of these things. I know that they're not readily available for you, but how can we get them to you? Um, we can bus you to other areas that have them. We can come in like I do and provide these offerings right in your space for you. So it's figuring out solutions to how come some zip codes have a very high average income and they have things on every corner that set people up for success from a wellness standpoint, but then you get into these geographic areas where the incomes are low, the median income's low. There, you have to drive five miles to even get to like a grocery store. So we're really, you know, there's so much work to be done. And I know we'll talk about that, but any little bit that I can do to help makes me feel so much better. But just to be able to find these areas and have more offerings for the people that live in them would just be huge and important. <laughs> Oh man, see, I'm on the second floor of my house and I just, right now, I want to rip my shirt off and jump out my window and scream <laughs> at the top of my lungs because the, the what you are bringing, you are bringing the heat. Guys, as you're listening to her talk, what she is saying is she's saying there's a way that you can share any kind of light, any kind of joy, any kind of mind, sh mind shift change to some people who just don't know. You don't have to be 30 years of, of knowledge you can be like hey let's let's try something different right even to your in your own home exactly. you can start there better foods better way of looking at life look at food as fuel don't look at fueled as a comfort i do i mean heck there's nothing better than ice cream with chocolate and caramel syrup on top sitting there just eating it 100 percent. but you're right after you're done eating you're like man Probably could have done with maybe just one scoop instead of like four, you know, and then topped it off with sprinkles of Oreos, right? It's just, though, I love this holistic approach is just small and simple changes will big things come to pass. I absolutely love that. that you guys can see why she's on. You can see the knowledge. <laughs> and I'll Holy. give you an example. You're so funny. Um, 
we teach people how to respect this space that we call a mouth, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we take care of our loved ones and we take care of our cars and we do all these things for people around us. But this space, as you just said, there are no take backs, right? Eating three scoops of ice cream instead of one, it's a problem. And it doesn't make us feel good, even though, you know, eating's emotionally helpful. It makes us feel good, but our bodies don't know what to do with it. And we're all eating way too much. So, you know, one of the biggest things I teach is portion control and mindful eating. It's like, how can we set ourselves up for success so that everything that comes through our mouth is respected? There's not multitasking. You're not watching television. You are focusing. Same with, we talked about self-care or watching a sunrise. You are focusing on a moment and tasting the flavors and appreciating it. And before you know it, you've eaten 50 calories less and you've put 50 ca less calories on your salad and you've taken in 50 less calories of some liquid juice that people don't count. So it's little changes that add up to really big results where you don't feel like you're sacrificing so much, but you're handling things before they happen instead of after. Hey everybody, I wanna take this quick second here. A lot of you have asked me what journal do I use, my family use, simple, this journal right here. See, my buddy Craig Smith has spent years and years developing a journal that takes everything that's up in here and puts it on paper so we can be edified and grow. So if you don't know what to write about, which oftentimes happens, he gives you ideas. And if you want power statements, things that say, I am this, he gives you those ideas. Now, if when you look at on one page, it says, this is what I'm accomplished. This is what I am statements. And there's a quote every single day that you get to write on and, and focus on. The second page is write your daily thoughts, get it out of your head, put it on paper to be the best version of yourself. The link's down below. Listen, I get no money for this. It's just, I believe in this journal. I love this journal. It's changed my life, my family's life. And if you want, it'll change your life as well. Oh, we, we could be done. Well, I could say, thank you. You guys listen to this. She laid out simple changes. I love how you say respect what we put into our mouth. I love that because you're right. We, I mean, the cars, the homes, everything, you know, oil change, I got an oil change. You got to do on our, our vehicles. We are so conscious of, Hey, what miles are we at? 5,000 miles yet. Okay. Call and make a, an appointment. Hey, uh, the AC goes out. It's, you know, in the middle of July, here in Utah, it's 105. It's like, it's hot, but we are not respecting what we put in our mouth. I love that respect concept. I've never heard that before. Well, and we're also working so hard each day to be alive, right. And take care of ourselves, but we don't realize that, you know, not moving is killing ourselves. Literally. We can talk about that eating, you know, foods that are cancer causing and are really artificial. It's not like we're going to do it. Sometimes I love it, but it's all in moderation. And, you know, you're right. It's equalizing what we're doing. How can we take care of some things and not others? How can we respect our space and understand what we're putting on our body is defeating the purpose of adding years to our life. So it's a mindset of really putting everything together to have the most results. Oh, guys, I'm telling you right now, those of you that are watching on YouTube or can see this live, well, it's taped obviously, but you are watching someone get in that zone of genius and 30 years of saying, I, what I'm talking from is a position of strength and truth. And she is saying, trust the process. Trust me. What she just gave you the last 10 minutes. I mean, come on, come on. All right. I need to move. I want to ask you this question. It's a, it, it's because I want people to understand this passion that you have and, and where this, this, this idea or this internal of helping, right? Guys, you need to understand something. Joy just didn't arrive to where she was at because she was gifted with something or, or she was given something easier her whole life. It wasn't. We're talking a little about something where we're going to be very sensitive to the subject, but she's been gracious enough to allow me to ask these questions for her. So, um, listen, her, you know, her, her mom was a, a manic depressant, right? At the age of 16 years old, her mom, you know, her mom at the age of 16 year old wanted to kill herself, you know, a month before her, her mom's 50th birthday, she, you know, she ended up taking her life. You know, joy is the youngest of three, you know, she was just married and now your mom is gone. I want to ask this question before I ask a few other questions where you are today. If you would, if you were to counsel your 
23 year old self and I say 23 because that's how old you were when your mom died. What would you what would you what kind of counsel would you give to yourself at that tender age of 23? I love that question. Well, yes, I mean, I personally lived in a house with a manic depressive who was an incredible woman and watched the chemical imbalances within her brain that are very real and know firsthand what it's like to live with mental illness. And unfortunately, back in the day, she didn't have all the pills and all the solutions and things and the doctors didn't know a lot. So, um, but I learned that by the time you're 23, I'm not saying that you can have a rough life and then go out after 23 and do wonderful things. Of course you can. Every day we're given can be magical. It depends on how we choose to live it and what we do with it. But I did learn that I ended up raising three of the most amazing children, right? I am an incredible mother. I didn't know that at the time, but looking back now, I realized that by 20 years old, 25 years old, you've been given a lot of the things that will last your lifetime. So at 23, I felt like I had so much to offer the solid things in my life that could allow me to go out and do something to change the world. I also realized that by 23, I was forced to be very strong because I had to be strong of what I had to endure and witness growing up. And so for me, I really thought to myself, what am I going to do now? Right. I can either look at the glass half empty or look at the glass half full. And that is such a huge question I ask people. Why would anybody not choose to look at the glass half full? If you're not choosing to look at the glass half full, whether you're 23 or a different age, why is that? What is it that is getting in the way? So breaking down all of that really is helpful to me and to other people. And I feel like there's so many easy ways to, to build those bridges, even from that standpoint. So I really just felt like I had to make a situation and make my mother proud, even though she wasn't there. So I took all the gifts that she gave me up to that age and, and the strength that she gave me and decided to really go out and make a difference and be the mother that she was and have all the gifts that she did minus the mental illness. And it just turned into an incredibly blessed life. And I didn't realize all the gifts that I had to offer, um, but I, I did have a talking to at 23 and it was very powerful. Oh man. I just want you to know, Joy, that we absolutely, me, everybody listening, absolutely love you. We love that you uh-huh. never gave up in life. We love that you looked at what and said, this is this happened for me. It didn't happen to me. You took it and said, "I will not." And look, look. All, all fairness, you. I mean, there are probably plenty of times growing up. Why is this the way? Why am I like this? Why do I have to live in this this space? What? Why is this my lot in life? I guess this is just what it is. This is my. This is the stick that I drew, and so I'm going to be miserable. I mean, think about your teenagers. We all know what it's like going through teenagers. You could have said that. You probably did. But then you hit a point and said, listen, this, what happened to me was for an experience and allows me to share with others. And we need you to know that we love you. We are grateful that you are here sharing your story, very, very personal stories with us. But more importantly, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. And it means the world to me. And I think one of the things that I asked my 23 year old self that I would ask people is how big are your problems? Like we all have problems and we have great days and bad days. And to me, everybody has this life graph, right? And we, I pull from the amazing highs of our life to get through the lows. And I wish everybody could do that. But I think also helping people put in perspective the problems we have helps a lot. And that's what I had to do at a very young age. And that's what I continue to teach people now is I would never take away from your problems as an individual. They are very real. But in perspective of life and in perspective of other really big problems, can we find a way to make the best of a situation and change our mindset? So I work hard on that as well. I love it. I love, okay, so I need, let me help, let me, I want to back up because your mom, you know, obviously your mom was diagnosed with this mental illness, very, very rough mental illness. Um, The doctors at the time, like you said, just weren't equipped with the knowledge, you know, how truly, truly how to help an individual with that, you know, with that mental illness. So I need, I would love to know your work that you're doing, you're helping individuals, as you said, not rely on like a pill or a potion or some experimental drug to fix them. 
Now, I'm not saying that those are not needed. 100%, those are needed. But at the at the minimum is what they, that should almost be a help to let me fix it holistically through yeah. the, my wellness. Ex can you dive into a little bit of that on how nutrition can help, how the self-care, yeah. the pe personal development? How can we... How can we yeah. curve that mindset of, hey, doc, give me something as opposed to let me yeah. try to let my body do what it does best? Well, and there really isn't a pill. I mean, I've had more people try everything, right? I wish there was. And, you know, but taking care of yourself makes you feel better. And the changes that I ask people to provide to their lives, the results are amazing. They can see it so quickly. So I'll give you an example. Again, it's small changes yield big results. That is huge. So for me, some of the biggest things, let's say with nutrition, are um, eating more vegetables, drinking more water, and eating more from the earth. So again, it's setting small goals. So if we ate all day with things that were packaged with things that we can't explain what they are and ingredient labels that have 20 different things that we can't pronounce, <laughs> right? We are all most, for the most part, are going to be sick. Our bodies have no idea what to do with them. And it just turns into really bad situations. So it's small changes. So what can you do tomorrow? And again, I look at people's food logs. I understand in your life, there is zero judgment here. And we all have to trust each other. We are all amazing humans. And because maybe somebody's goal is to lose weight or whatever their wellness goal is, there's no judgment here. It's a matter of saying, I want to feel better. So unfortunately, doctors are busy, right? They don't have the time to spend. And I'm not saying all doctors, there are some incredible doctors that take a lot of time. But for the most part, putting someone on a cholesterol med that has high cholesterol or putting someone on a blood pressure med is a very easy approach. It's what I do all day is fight and work to get people off these medications. I mean, the medical field is putting people on these things and never rechecking or never testing them or never telling them you can control so much of these problems with moving and with what you put in your body. So why don't we try something for three months or six months? Again, I'm going to get sidetracked, but I have horribly high cholesterol genetically. I am a perfect walking example. My cholesterol is anywhere from 260 to 300. Like I'm textbook terrible, but all my numbers are amazing. I'm on no medication. I mean, genetically I have high cholesterol, but what do I do? I check myself. I get heart scans. I, um, I try to eat things that are lower in cholesterol than others, which we can talk about. But basically, mentally and physically, I'm a really healthy human being. So I don't have to deal with some of those problems. So for me, it's, you know, nutrition wise, it's setting a small goal. So tomorrow is potato chips, your jam, maybe you take out 10 potato chips, instead of eating from a whole bag, you mindfully eat them, you focus on what you're doing, you taste them, and you break them into each five pieces, and you make it last for 30 minutes when you've eaten 10 chips instead of 100 chips. So there's portion control, things that we can do that make a huge difference. Um, as far as moving the three things that I swear by when if you had a breakdown fitness, is stretching huge. We get into horrible situations as we age if we are not moving our body and stretching. It's strength. So applying some kind of weight resistance, even on a very small scale, as we get older, osteoporosis, there are huge studies on why that is so important. And lastly, high intensity cardiovascular exercise. That means two minutes tomorrow, get your heart rate up hard for 30 seconds, walk up a couple flights of steps, rest 30 seconds, do it four times. So getting your heart rate up forces your blood flow. It affects your metabolism. So many of us don't like to be uncomfortable in that zone where our heart rate is up. So we keep ourselves in more of a fat burning, comfortable zone, which isn't helping us at all. So small things like getting your heart rate up. So those three things from a fitness standpoint, we can talk about are huge. And then as far as sleep? Are there things that we can do for sleep? I mean, people who are getting less than seven or eight hours a night are increasing their blood pressure, are having heart disease, are doing so many things that you don't even realize. So how can we check out at night from technology before we go to bed, do something that's peaceful, um, take melatonin, give ourselves permission to focus on mind control where I keep a post-it note and a pad of paper by my bed and I clear my brain in the middle of the night so I don't ever have things sitting on my brain. 
that gets into stress control. Are there things on your brain that you absolutely cannot control? We need to breathe them out. We need to move them out. We need to act on them. So I could go on and on and on, but all of these things have components that are so small sacrifices, such small sacrifices that make such a huge difference. So it's breaking everything down to very small segments and then setting small goals that set you up for success and they build upon each other, but they all make you feel better.